Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody had a great weekend or a great yesterday or a great night or a great day. It doesn't matter what time it is. I just, I can't change time frames. So I just talk according to what it is that I'm experiencing right now, which is morning. <laughs> and as always, place your cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life, people. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today is going to be a little different for me, I guess, because I'm talking about a story that I don't even know what God wants me to talk about in regards to. <laughs> I don't. It just set up my mind to read it. I'm going to start with Exodus chapter 15. Starting with verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which they have brought, Upon the Egyptian, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where were twelve wells of water, and there three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped by the waters. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. Let's just remember what he said. Let's remember what he said a few seconds ago. Let's see what he, what he said again. There he made for them a statute and ordinance, and there he proved them. <laughs> right? Just remember that. And church said said to them, Would to go we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full? For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Now check this out, people. Why did God send Moses back to Egypt? Because their cries reached him. Cries reached them. They wanted deliverance from Egypt. Now here it is. After they out of Egypt, ready to go back. Hmm. Hmm. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may Prove them. Mm -hmm. Neither they will walk, whether they will walk in my law or no. You know, when we gave our life to Christ, we, I'm sure y'all people at the sound of my voice, hopefully y'all are Christian too. And you gave your life over to Jesus Christ. You have entered into something, especially when God comes save you. <laughs> Because he did. Basically, Jesus is saved. You come to Jesus for him to save you, right? To set you on the right course. Now, people don't think that we get proved this day and age. We still get proved. We do. Now, what did he say it again? He said, he told, now listen, listen to this commands. God is such and such amount. Very simple instructions. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. One of the first things God set in their mind was honoring the Sabbath day. 
one of the first things he did, and Moses and Aaron, sorry about that, I'm getting a little hot in here. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, and even then you shall know that the Lord have brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning, then you shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he hear of your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that you murmur against us? And Moses said, this shall be, when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. For that the Lord hear of your murmurings, which you murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurs are not against us, but against the Lord. Really think long and hard about a lot of things, people. We complain about a lot of stuff. We're never content with nothing. We, are, we always feel like something should be different or this and that. We love to complain. Be careful about complaining, people. And Moses spake unto Aaron, saying, All the congregation of the children of Israel, come near before the Lord, for he have heard your murmurings. So if he hear murmurings back then, you think he'll hear it now? And it came to pass as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, and they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spake unto Moses, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, speaking to them, saying, At even you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. You shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, the dew lay around about the, the host. And when the dew that lay was, lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wished not what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord had given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Now, gather of it every man according to his eating. What are you saying right now? Don't be greedy. An omer for every man according to the number of your person. Take you every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so and gather some more, some less. And when they did meet it with the omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, let no man leave of it till the morning. Look at this simple commandment. You see, God is building trust with us. Notwithstanding, they hearkened out unto Moses. But some of them left of it until the morning. And it bred worms and stank. And Moses was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two almonds for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said to them, This is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which you will bake today, and see that you which you receive, and that which remaineth over lap up for you to keep until the morning. Now think about this. All through the week, if they try to gather over, Mm -hmm. It started rotting. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta understand why you gotta keep God's commands. Because God knows exactly what He's doing. Mm -hmm. But for the Sabbath, it didn't rot. Mm -hmm. Ain't that weird? No refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And they laid it up to the morning as Moses bade and did not stink. Neither was there any worm therein. And Moses said, Eat that today. For today is Sabbath unto the Lord. Today you shall find, not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for it to gather, and they found none. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse you to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for that the Lord had given you the Sabbath. Therefore he give you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide to every man in his place. And let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. And the house of Israel called the name there of manna. And it was like coriander seed, white. And the taste of it was like waters. Wafers made with honey. I guess it was like oatmeal. And Moses said, this is a thing which the Lord commanded. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot, and put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it up before the Lord, to keep, 
to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years. That's a, pay attention to that, that 40 years. Until they came to a land inhabited, they did eat manna. Until they came into the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omen is the tenth part of an epha. Hmm. I think I know what God wants me to talk about. Now remember, he said, I want to prove them. He said it twice. So 40 years, let's think, 40 years in the wilderness, they ate manna and they learned to keep the God, God's Sabbath. Learn how to do it. With a lot of trial and error. You know, just imagine 40 years, you ain't got to eat. You ain't got to worry about eating nothing. God got you. For 40 years. 40 years. Now, if you read on further, after that, things change. Things change a lot. Do you understand during this time period? But to prove you. Now, just remember, people. When you give your life to God, you got to think about it. When you come to God, you come to God for deliverance. You come for heart, God to protect you from your own mind, your own imagination, the world's, the devil's schemes, and he's trying to protect you. Behold, I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. Right? He know what his plans he has for you. But you got to separate the real from the fake. Now look, you check this out. Right after the, the first day, the first Sabbath, somebody was like, you know what, I'm going out there anyway. Greet him. Then he didn't take heed. I guess he ate all he had the day before. You know. And there was none. He didn't put none out there. For because obedience, he said, better to obey than to sacrifice. You see, when one thing about God's commands. They are different. Mm. Some that he got his commands in the Bible, but he got commands for us as individuals too. You know, I was reading Samson story. How his parents didn't realize that he was falling in love with a Philistine woman because of God's will. Mm. Because of God's will for Samson. Right? That was Samson's story <laughs> you know so the thing is one thing I got to realize and we got to realize is God has a purpose for every soul on this earth and the thing is every soul is going to go through a test phase a proof phase now the thing is this is the thing how do you know if you pass in the test? Because the Bible says, I give you over to your vile imaginations, right? I give you over to it, right? <laughs> so a lot of people are being tried. I've been tried for years. Me. You. Some of us kept the course. Some of us still do what we want to do. Not what God wants us to do. Because I'm telling you, hardening of the heart is one of the most dangerous ways to fall into the hands of the living God, giving you over to your vile affections. Now, think about that. All those years, he taught them to keep the Sabbath day. He taught them how to do it. <laughs> Ain't that amazing? And people are like, well, well, 40 years. Because God had a plan. Same, same with your life. There's certain things you've been praying for that ain't happening. And God knows the perfect timing. If you faint not, within your patience to possess ye your what? Soul, said the Lord. Within your patience. Patience in keeping his commands, keeping his statutes, keeping his ways. Well, y'all already know what I'm going to talk about today, right? This, this is before that major day that everybody loved. Hollow, All Hallows Eve. All Hallows Eve day. Let me pause and I will continue.